I just want to welcome you to the REMAX University Agent Coaching Webinar Series. As most of you know, the purpose of these webinars is to help connect our network uh, and to provide both perspective and best practices from some of the industry's best top coaches. So today I am super, super excited to bring with you the phenomenal John Cheplak. Uh, we apparently have had some uh, some technical difficulties this morning, but uh, I think that's April Fools. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Yes. We just wanted to knock you off your game, John. Uh, uh, really, really excited that you are here with us today. We are going to have people joining us from all around the world. Um, again, experiencing very, very different, um, t you know, uh, angles of what the uh, real estate network looks like today, what the business, what the industry, what their uh, particular relationship with buyers and sellers looks like today. And uh, you come from a uh, long uh, history of supporting and coaching our top team leaders, both in the United States and in Canada and abroad. Uh, so we know that you are coming to us today with a perspective like no other. And I know our people are pumped up. I'm starting to watch people from all over the world log in and say hello. Uh, and I'm really just going to hand over the entire uh, webinar to you. Super excited to hear about how we might be adjusting our business plan, but also maybe some deep dive into what you do best, right? Which is the teaching and the coaching of phenomenal marketing, how to use video in a time like this, how to go virtual and build a relationship and a sphere and um, and help bring some certainty in a time where there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, so with that, Mr. John Chaplack, take it away. Well, <clears throat> well, thank you and welcome everyone around the world. It's truly a privilege. You know, um, every time I <clears throat> get in front of people and get an opportunity to share it's a privilege. It doesn't matter how long I've, I've been doing this. And, and what I hope to bring to you is 32 years of real estate experience. I was in the trenches as an agent. Um, so I've been through the, the different market shifts and experiences and every single one of them being different. Um, and, and then since about 2000, gosh, I think it was about 2002, starting in the coaching and consulting literally throughout the world. And, and now today, um, taking all of that experience from the different marketplaces and, and then bringing to you since, you know, we went through, you know, we talked about challenging times. And one thing I want to work with you on, words are everything. And you're going to hear this a lot from me, um, are changing times. It's just the subtleties. Think about this, one of the key pieces, and what you'll probably get more from me, we'll talk about strategies and tactics, and, and those are really important, but here's what I've learned in 32 years. Although things have changed, everything's really the same. Although things have changed, everything is really the same. You know, you take a look at a, a pro baseball player that makes $35 million a year hitting home runs and that pro baseball player, when they come back at the beginning of the season, the first thing they do is they hit the ball off the tee. And one of the things that I've learned in, in my business career in, in working with elite agents, top broker owners, CEOs, pro athletes um, outside of our industry naturally is it's the tiny hinges that swing big doors. It's the simple that solves the complex. Everything big is built on the back of micro commitments. And the current space that we're in right now, the circumstance that we're in right now, is calling us to really go down to the micro commitments because there's an energy that's happening. You know, we talk about circumstance. There was a circumstance 30 days ago that's always been in our business. And that circumstance was sales skepticism. It's natural, we're a salesperson. And so what we've done throughout our careers is we've handled objections. And um, you know, really what I say is our job is to lower the sales skepticism, okay? We want to lower those barriers that people have. And, and many times what we've done in our industry is we've waited for the objection, we've had the right objection. Well, one of the things that I've always believed in, and for me, as I lead through these times through um, coaching many of your peers that, that, that may be on here, some of the top leaders, literally the top team in the world, um, top team in Canada, people that recognize the top brokers, is, is what we're looking at is we're just going back to what's exciting about this and stay with me. There's dark and there's light in the situation. And, and, and believe me, this, this current space that we're in, 
I have a family member, as many of you do, or, or know someone that's close to you that um, is high risk in the situation. So I come with empathy uh, and an understanding. Um, I was in the middle of a, a home purchase too, so I come with that. But, but one of the things that, that we're really looking at is, is going down to foundational principles. And what I want you to capture from the time with me today is if you go back to the tiny hinges that swung big doors, you know, hitting that ball off the tee. If you go back to those micro commitments, every one of you that are here, you've arrived based on that series of micro commitments that you've made. You've done it somewhere personally. You've done it professionally. And that's the reason you're here. It's like those singles. And I want you to get that too. The other thing that I want you to look at too, as you're sitting here in a time of uncertainty is draw upon, you know, we're taught so much to look into the future. And, and, you know, the windshield's bigger than the rear view mirror. That's why we look out forward. Well, I think that, you know, the rear view mirror is really, really small because it calls upon us to focus. And focus is your superpower because the only two things that we can talk to accurately is something we don't like and something that's happened in the past. Well, we've all had experiences that maybe we haven't liked, that maybe didn't feel good, but you wanna know what? Congratulations, you're here. See, your future is in your past, and I want you to really hold that close to you right now as we go forward. So what I've done is, is I've taken the time and really put a lot of time, energy, and thought because there's so much I want to share, but there's some critical pieces right now more than ever because focus is our superpower. Here's the first thing I want to share with you is this, and I will give you tactics, but I promise you, your video you do, your email you send, your virtual tour you do, your Facebook post you do, your Instagram post you do, all those things, they don't matter if you don't get your message right. And the right message is based in principle. See, remember this, every choice that someone makes is based on the words that they hear or the words that they read. You can have all the tactics. And listen, we need to look at virtual tour. We need to look at doing business a different way. But I'm going to promise you this, the people that get through this to get to it. See, remember that principle. You got to go through it to get to it. And to get to it is this business that's going to be on the other side of it. Foundational principles always carry you through. So here's what I want you to know. Here's number one. We're all in the same business. And I want you to write it down. If you're a broker owner manager, if you're a team leader, if you're John Cheplak, a coach, if you're any of the other coaches out there, whatever business you're in, we're all in the enrollment business. I do the same thing that you do. And you know what I do? And you know what you do as a broker owner manager? And you know what you do as, a, as, a, as an agent in the community? Okay, you know what you do? You extend value out to people. You make deposits in the business relationship equity account. Today, you need to make deposits in the emotional relationship equity account. At the end, I'm going to bring up some words that are critical because copywriting is where it's at. We've heard about copywriting today. You've got to be sophisticated. Let me give you an example right now I want to throw out to you. You need to take the word think out of your vocabulary right now. And you need to take the word feel. Because right now it's emotional. You know, but wait a minute. It always was an emotional decision, wasn't it? See, here's what I hope you find in this. I'm going to share with you really basic stuff that we got away from and that we overlook because listen, I'm suspect to it. We go to what's sexy. We go to what sells. What sounds great. But you know what? It's the simplicity. The simplicity. I know why, because right now I know a number of three agents alone that will do six digits in revenues. Okay. This month closed. Well, March six digits personally and didn't buy a lead. They didn't have to buy any business and they're not having pushback, which is shocking. They're having questions that come up. Now I know there's other markets where it's absolute pause. It's because of the relationship. It's because of the principles. It's because they have made deposits in the emotional relationship equity account. And I'm going to come back to that later on as we go into the principles and the action steps that support this. But hold this close. You know, it's interesting in my 18 years, I mean, many people said, oh, he's the kumbaya guy. He's the, and I've just stayed true. 
I've just stayed true to it because you want to know what? It's not your tactic that's going to have you win. You're in the human resource, human relationship, human experience, human behavior business. And the few that come to understand that and become obsessed with it, they don't need a script or a dialogue. Let me ask you a question. Anyone here ever go on a listing presentation? You walk in the door and they didn't ask a single question about what you did. Did you need your listing presentation? Did you need your script? Did you need your dialogue? Did you need your objection handler? No, they looked right at you and said, whatever you say, I trust you. Because you did your job in that relationship. Think about it. See, we're selling past the clothes in our activities that we do. The person that has to spend a lot of money in marketing and is missing and not getting the ROI that they want, that's having to work as hard today as they did 10 years ago in their business to make the same amount of money, they didn't make the deep psychological and emotional bond. See, no, when it's no like trust, oh, wait a minute. This isn't too advanced. It's not. We shoot past the target. We're all in the enrollment business. And it's our job to create an experience of what it's going to be like when people join us, work with us, go through the experience with us. Okay? Now, here's two principles that have never changed. And as I share it with you, I'm modeling your communication with buyers and sellers. This isn't a behind the scenes conversation. This is a conversation to be transparent with your agents if you're a leader, with the consumer, with me, with my clients. See, here's the real basics and keep it really simple. See, we have a circumstance and you know what? I was an agent going through the circumstance when they had the billboard in Seattle, uh, when Boeing moved out and the market was changing Well, the last person leaving Seattle, please turn out the lights. I was in the Bay Area in the dot-com, dot-bomb era as an operator, okay? So this isn't theory. It's someone that, you know, has made a living on a real estate transaction, and I still do. My income is in direct relationship to a real estate transaction because I work with real estate people, okay? And then I went through 9-11, and now here we are. And I want you to write these two down, and it's for you to remember. Again, needs, circumstances. There've been 15% interest rates, needs, circumstances. Here's the thing you need to understand. There's a circumstance around us, okay? But people are still going to make decisions based on their needs. And their needs, in most cases, in buying a home, we always talk about it, it's an emotional decision. That's why, how does it feel versus what do you think? See, these are the subtleties. One word changes everything. This is copywriting. This is making psychological and emotional bonds, okay? This is echoing back the feelings that people are having. This is not using my sales language, and I'm going to give you the framework on how to get the exact language people are using. It's echoing back the words my audience is using. It builds trust quicker, right? So, you know, of these two, what's used more, social distancing or social isolation? Just some subtleties there. So here's the bottom line of what we have right now. We're in a space of uncertainty. That's our circumstance. It's not a super high interest rate, okay? It's uncertainty. Uncertainty is an emotion. Let me make it really clear to you. There's a document that I have right here, and, and, and you know, I'm gonna, you're gonna remain professional. An organization was passing out a document called the Coronavirus Objection Handler. It was sad, yet it excited me because it again confirmed that what I've always believed in and what the people that I work with are attracted to and aligned to and the results they get are right. Number one, you can't sell someone out of uncertainty. Number two, you can't sell someone out of, you can't objection handle someone out of uncertainty. Uh-oh. And here's how I know. Because in time, in the people I work with, I've had people reaching out to me that are, hey, I'm stuck. What do I say here? And, and with all due respect, because they were in that objection handle, that sell thing. Well, come back to the basics with me, you guys. Everyone wants to buy. No one wants to be sold. Let's go back to the think versus feel. The heart chooses. The mind justifies. Well, John, where's the strategy and tactic? Listen, I could have you leave this live video with me and never give you a strategy and tactic. And if you take these principles back with you, the ones that you've known, the ones we've been raised on. <laughs> I mean, we're being called to a grounding time frame, which has to do with relationships. If you took these back and didn't change much 
with the way you did business, you're going to soar. Period. You're going to soar. So let's continue on here. So here is number three. No one can make an emo make a decision when there's an emotional block. A human being, there is an emotional block right now. Uncertainty. A human being can't make a decision. Your job is this. Your number one obsession every day is reassurance. Period. Take your objection handlers, their history. Okay? Take your sales, their history. Reassurance. And guess what? When this first started to happen, you know, it, it was really easy because it's the way that we've always done it. It's the way we've always done it. Make deposits in the business relationship equity account. Don't wait for objections. Handle objections in advance. Okay? You build so much trust by giving people value that you never have to ask. Literally to a point for leaders here that are on this um, live video where I tell all my leaders, take your calls to action out of it. You don't need to because we make deposits and we pull people to us. And now more than ever, people are stumped. What do I say? Is it inappropriate to, to make cold calls? Is it inappropriate to market myself? No, it's not inappropriate to market yourself right now. What's inappropriate is if you don't get the message right, okay? So now here's the thing that we wanna take a look at. So first we had sales skepticism, and now we've got this cherry on top called uncertainty. It's through reassurance. And I'm going to take you through a seven-step process, which you've heard before. You haven't heard the seven-step process, but I want you to see how you stack these on top of each other. It's going to support you today, but it's going to support you into the future. Because on the other side of this, you know, listen, I don't operate from fear, um, but I operate from truth. There are some people that may not be on the other side of it. I'm going to tell you what, though, the people that hold on to these foundational principles, what's going to happen for them through this and on the other side of it is going to be unbelievable. Okay? So here is the bottom line. Okay? Number one, the single most greatest concern of a human being, there's three of them. Me, myself, and I. Now, I want you to pause. I want you to pause and I want you to take a look at every marketing message that you've put out there historically. I want you to take a look at um, whether it's a video that you do, uh, it is a, a Facebook post, it's an email you send out. How, do you need to flip the script? Do you need to flip the script? Because it's not about us and it's never been about us. It's all about the consumer. So here's the overarching piece that I wanna take you to that works, okay? The greatest sales book ever written in the history of mankind, and it wasn't written for sales. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And stay with me, because we've been testing. I, I, we did this back in, in, in 08 and 09. We did it in 9-11. We did it in the dot-com, the dot-pom. Write this down and just own it. See, if me, myself, and I are the three most important subjects to a human being, the next thing is this. Okay. Seek first to understand, then be understood. Period. You know the trap we fall into as salespeople? Especially, it can be challenging. I know that some people here are in panic mode. It's just the reality. Some people weren't prepared financially. Uh, there's, you know, when does it end? Um, what's it going to look like? And I understand that. And, and it's okay. See, what I want you to know, it doesn't matter what you did up to the moment you got onto this video this live feed, what matters is what you decide to do after this, because it just takes one choice. So number one, seek first to understand. Now I'm gonna take you through some more basics, and this is the progression of where it needs to go. So you're doing videos, so you're doing emails, and so you're doing social media, and so you're doing reach outs, okay? That's awesome. These principles are gonna support you. Number one, nurture. Well, John, that's nothing new. No, it's not. Everything's changed, but it's always, but it's still the same. You know what nurture's definition, and stay with me, listen, is frequency important of reaching out to people? Is cadence important? Absolutely. I work with the highest converters um, really in the industry. I just do across all, all brands. 
But you want to know what? You know what the definition, and it's the beauty of what's happening. The definition was ambush. You know what? The definition, and I went looking just to make sure. The definition of nurture is care for, encourage, support. Is that how you're following up with your buyers and sellers right now? Or are you trying to sell them? Because remember, everyone wants to buy and no one wants to be sold. And you want to know it's really weak when I give you and care for and encourage support. You really don't need a script because those are values that each and every one of you have. Guess what's beautiful? If I stick with the principle and I show up as the human being that I am based on these principles and I care for someone, I encourage them and I support them and I'm attached to the process of nurture. See, you know what I've told my clients and this started about three weeks ago when this started going on, reaching out to a 1300 agent company that I work with, reaching out to 150 agent brokerage, reaching out to small teams. As I said, write down the word nurture, draw a circle around it, and a line through it. You know that slash, no, gone. Finally, the definition's history, because guess what? The evolving times in our world are calling us to be a better human, to be a better leader, and to be a better agent, period. Period. What an amazing opportunity, because it's really simple to nurture people and care for them, encourage and support, okay? Number two, marketing principle 101, and I'm gonna take you through this. Meet people where they're at. I want to remind you of the 95-5 marketing rule. And it's the reason why, and listen, my life has depended on a real estate transaction now for 50, oh, let's see, I'm 53, for 49 years. Because my mother was a single mom, was working three jobs, and she got into real estate. She burned the boats, okay, and, and, went, and went for it, okay? And, and, and so it's these basic principles. Meet people where they are at. Meet people where they're at. Where are people at right now? Okay. Where they're at right now is they're in the coronavirus environment. When you look at the 95 5 rule, even before this, and the reason that we're maybe ranked up there at times with attorneys, and I know each and every one of you are fighting for our professionals, but we're ranked up there with attorneys. We're ranked up there with, with lawyers in, in, in how people see us in the Harris Poll and other polls because we're violating a simple principle even prior to right now. The 95 5 rule says this that 95% of your audience is not even in the consideration phase, yet we run one message at them Do you want to buy or sell and I'm so amazing. Woo! <laughs> right? So guess what we do with the 95% that are indifferent? We turn them into annoyed. Okay? But then there's the 5% that are in the consideration phase. Well, here's what the brilliant leaders are doing. Here's what the brilliant team leaders and top agents are doing. They're focusing on, see, the great opportunity today isn't in with the 5% the 5% that are in the consideration phase where real estate conversation is relevant to them. That's the red ocean. That's where all the sharks are. The greatest opportunity is in the 95% for people in this for the long game. If you're in it for the short game, hey, go duke it out for that 5%. Because here's what's happening. Here's what's happening with the brokerages that are growing, the companies that are growing massively. And people wonder why the teams that are doing mass transaction, because they're focused on the 95.5 on the 95% that are indifferent, but they're meeting them where they're at with the message they want. No matter what, when you leave from here, you can do all the tricky, wonderful things and have all the tools. It won't matter if you don't get your message right. So where's everyone at today? They're at the coronavirus. All right, let's talk to them about the coronavirus. No, stay with me, okay? Here's step number three. And these are marketing principles that are gonna help you right now, but they will carry you through. See, I can tell you, do this thing, but you wanna know what? That's a thing. What I want is a principle that you can carry forward with you forever. See, a tactic only may work right now, but a principle endures. So enter where they're at, enter the conversation going in the head. So where we're at is we're in this time of uncertainty. What's the conversation going in their head? Well, let me take you through business principles because I work with entrepreneurs outside our industry that want to do a startup business. You know, the number one thing I asked them is this, what's the problem? What is your, what is your expertise and what's the problem that people have? What is your solution? All right, you've got a viable business. So now we've got a business that we're in right now. Is their number one problem buying and selling real estate? Mm, I don't know. I think the level of uncertainty right now is everyone's number one problem. And, and I don't say that laughingly as I'm locked down here. I, I don't. 
Um, what I do is I just keep a great spirit with it because, okay, so great. Meet them where they're at, enter the conversation in their head. Here's the conversation going on in their head. What am I going to do about my student loans? What am I going, it depends on your avatar, right? This depends on your avatar. For someone that's working with, with um, first time buyers, that's a different avatar. They're probably more concerned with unemployment. When you're talking to, see this is where, this is marketing. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to go wide and be diluted and have bad margins. When you go deep and you focus on your avatar, just the simplicity of knowing if my avatar is more focused and concerned with unemployment, well, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm going to be the information portal. See, be the information portal. Be the bridge to the gap of the problems they have in their personal life while they're sitting out there in the 95.5, so then or in the 95%, because when they become the 5%, it's just the next natural step they choose you. Now let me take you to an example. Again, you've all gone on what we call a lay down listing because you know what? You've done something while they were in that 95% that was indifferent or you've worked with someone, you've impacted the community, you've met them where they're at. Think of all the opportunities right now to meet people where they're at enter the conversation going on in their head, give them reassurance while your competition is saying, hey, listen, you know what? There's not that much competition out there right now. There were multiple offers before you better jump in and interest rates are low. Good luck. Can you get there and speak to that? Because there is a truth maybe in your marketplace that now there's maybe less buyers out there because of a little bit of uncertainty and someone comes forward that wasn't. Absolutely. Can you talk about when they're looking for counsel and reassurance after you've walked them through this process of reassuring where they're starting to look at the logic because now you've removed You've, you've, you've created a certainty so they can have surety and peace of mind. You've removed that emotional block. Then you can have those conversations. But right now, I want to know, how can I get the SBA loan? How can I give me some information on the CARES Act? You know, go to, right now, I know already, if you go Google the CARES Act, look, here they are. They're coming for you. You know, you've got contractors that are doing things on, we'll negotiate your mortgage for you. We'll, we'll negotiate your um, we'll, we'll get your SBA loan for you. We'll work with you on your student loans. Now, I'm not saying be an expert on that. Be a conduit by meeting people where they're at and entering the conversation going on there. You're not here to solve coronavirus. None of us are. You're here to solve the problems going on in their head and answer the questions that are going on in their head and meet them where they're at. That's marketing. And here's the other thing I want you to remember right now. You know, you've all heard the thing where, um, and maybe you haven't, but I'm going to say, if you put laughter in your presentation or when you're talking to people, the likelihood that they're going to retain it goes up dramatically because it's emotion. And there's only two emotions. There's love and fear. They're both emotions. Here's what you need to know is right now is the most critical opportune time to market the right way with the right message. What I've just been sharing with you is a way of marketing, meeting people where they're at, making deposits. Right now, the person that is engaging with people at the highest level, serving and supporting them on a personal level is gonna come out the other side a rock star. And I'm not talking about spending marketing dollars, I'm talking about spending these dollars, the dollars that always win, because the heart always chooses, period. Meet them where they're at, Enter the conversation going on in their head, and guess what starts happening naturally in all the things that you hear? Empathy. You become relatable. So here's what we've done. We've looked at nurture from a whole different perspective. This is a principle to carry from the immediately when you get off the call. I want you to look at the language you're using. I want you to look at what you're writing. I want you to look at how you're, you're interacting with people. I want to look at and, and recognize, am I saying think or feel? How are you feeling right now about going forward, okay? So we've nurtured, we meet them where they're at, we enter the conversation going on in their head, we've demonstrated empathy and now we're relatable. You see me moving down the continuum of reassurance? I don't wanna sell you. 
Because if I even go to sell mode, I'm going to push you off. I'm going to push you back. I'm going to create resistance. Now the final piece. Now we start moving further. See, the highest form of human persuasion, not manipulation, human persuasion is self-discovery. And self-discovery is by asking people a question. See, the number one way to get a human being to make a choice, make a change, okay? And then I'll take it into leadership. We're leaders that are looking at productivity, getting agency. Leaders think they can train agents into productivity. <laughs> Let me know how that one works out for you. <laughs> you think you can you know, tell people what to do. Let me know how that one works out for you. No. The number one way, see, this is just basic human behavior, ladies and gentlemen. Number one way to get a human being to make a choice, make a change, or move into productivity is self-discovery. See, the most brilliant person on the planet doesn't tell people what to do. They ask the thought-provoking questions that allows people to come to the choice. Every single time. And here's, I think, what happens is we can fall into the trap of the sexy sales language. And it's normal, okay? We can fall into the trap of, um, let me tell you how great it's going to be. You know, understand me first and then I'll understand you. When, you know what? It's really simple. It's meeting people where they're at, discovering what's really important to them, finding what the challenges are, what the emotional blocks are, and going through a process of reassuring them. Now we've moved them to self-discovery. Self-discovery is asking questions and they get to choose. And you know what they get to choose? And you know what you get to tell them? You know, here's what I'm here to do today. Today more than ever, I'm here to support you in making the decision today that's best for you. How are you feeling about that? And those are the simple steps that, by the way, they're working. Don't we want engagement? No calls to action. How are you? How's your family? See, here's the phone call that my clients are using in the thousands. And we started doing this three weeks ago. Hey, it's John Cheplak. Number one, I'm reaching out purely on a personal level. Just want to see how you and your family are doing in these changing times. Changing versus challenging. And you know what I really shift to? In these times. Because we are in these times. And our power is in the right now. My certainty is in the right now. Because that's what I have power over. And you want to know the responses that are... Here's what's happening, guys. People are answering the phones more than ever. I'm fortunate. I, you know, I do 80 coaching calls a week with top leaders. And this has been going on for three weeks strong following these dialogues. Because you want to know what? We're meeting people where they're at. We're entering the conversation going on in their head. How do you feel? And we're making deep psychological bonds with human beings. That's if you wanted to find selling, that's selling. And you want to know what? Your costs go down dramatically. They go down dramatically when you operate in that way. Now, I want you to think about this. When you reach out to someone right now and you, you come with no intention other than to serve them, um, you know, one of the things that I've just learned is this over time in the industry for 32 years is, you know, if I come out, come without any expectation except for the one to serve, it's all going to work out just fine. So here's what's naturally going to happen. What are they going to ask you next before you hang up the phone? And, and here's what I suggest. Don't go there if they don't ask, because then you look totally like, oh, I see what you were doing. You know, it's the reason that most agents don't follow up with their past clients and their database because it feels funky to them. Well, I'm gonna call them and check in, but I really want them to send me someone, <laughs> right? I mean, and, and yet, I don't know, I don't wanna misquote, there's people a lot smarter than me on this call. What's it, 90% of all people said that they would use their agents again, and only 80% of the time does the agent ever reach out to them, something like that. So here's what you do. You do it the right way. Well, thank you. We just want to let you know if there's anything we can do to support you personally, we're here for you. Well, wait, John, let me ask you this. What, what, how's this impacting the real estate market? You know what percentage of people are asking that without an agent leading there? It's happening naturally. And you know what? Naturally creates a smoothness to the process. Problem with sales, it can have friction friction and friction causes people to stall okay and so here's the answer the truth right now here's what i want to give to you as you reach out 
And, and this is very similar if someone's pausing. Now I have markets right now where they're just gung ho, they're still going, but you're all in varying degrees of pause. And again, these principles you bring with you forever. Hey, it's John, you know, I mean, a year from now, two years from now, hey, it's John, just wanna check on your personal, how's the family, what are you guys doing? Nothing else. Good, just know that we're here for you. Well, I'm glad you asked. Understandably, some people are pausing. Well, at the same time, there's people still buying, there's people selling, and some people just moved in, closed on their home. Talk to, I'm giving you framework. Talk to exactly what's happened. Go to that thing that, you know, you don't want to say, hey, people are pausing, people are, people are backing out. Just tell the truth. If you leave the truth out that everyone knows, people think you're a liar. And I'm not saying you're lying, you're just leaving something. Don't do it. It's a red flag. If you don't do that, you know, you know what? I'm glad you asked. Understandably, people are in a pause. We are in a changing time. Yet, there's people still buying. There's people still selling. There's people closing and moving in. And then there's other people that are refinancing because maybe they didn't take advantage of. See, stories, stories, stories. Not, well, I'm glad you asked. You know, there's less inventory. So right now, I think you should... Or excuse me, there's more inventory because less people are looking. So maybe you should really look because I remember six months ago, you were looking, you need to jump on it. No. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Okay. See, story has withstood the test of time. It's in our DNA over the years. Go back in history. And you know what we do with story? is we allow someone to find where they fit in the story and then they choose that self-discovery. See, I don't need manipulative, cheesy sales dialogues. Mm -hmm. What I need to do is allow someone to self-discover. Some people are pausing. Hey, there's people still buying, some selling. There's multiple offers still going on in Seattle. Uh, people are closing. Some people now, give them the broad picture. Some people are refinancing because they missed and, and, and maybe thinking that they were waiting, but they think, I need to jump on the refinance just to lower their payment. Now there's other people that now I'm being a counsel to them, but I'm giving them places where they can fit in. So they feel, because everyone feels they're alone. It's normal. I want them to find a place they fit in the story and then they can choose. Now there's other people that are refinancing, pulling a chunk of change out just to be safe. They want to have a little nest egg. Then there's a third group of people that are pulling a chunk of change out because they think there may be some investment opportunities. Now I'm not seeing that yet. I can't predict it's going to happen, but that's what's happening right now. But you know what's interesting? Mr. Smith, Mrs. Jones is in 32 years. It's really without discounting. You got to say this, but by no means discounting the current circumstance that we're in. It's still the same as when I got back in the business 32 years ago. People are keeping in mind what the circumstances are. Maybe the financial crash in 08, 09. Maybe it was 9-11. Maybe it was the dot-com, dot-bomb. Maybe it was 17% interest rates. Circumstance. And I'm not saying anyone's better or worse than another, but it's circumstance. And they have that in mind, but ultimately they're still making decisions based on their needs based on what I shared with you, and here's where you pivot. How are you feeling about the current environment, about the current real estate marketplace? You know something? We thought it was gonna hit the peak of the market six months from now. This happened all the time, you guys. I mean, I've got a direct pipeline, as you guys do too. I'm just telling you from what I've shared that works. You know what? We're going to call you in six months, but maybe it's the peak of the market. We need to, we need to sell now. You know what? We've stayed away from the marketplace because it was so competitive. My guess is less people are out there looking. And, and so maybe, you know, it's not going to be as competitive. I'm not looking to rip off a home. I'm just looking to get a home and not be in a bidding war. Maybe it's a good time to look. Okay. And you know what you've got to be in is the long game and expect nothing because here's the bottom line. I'm going to tell you because I know, because I see objection handler, coronavirus objection handler documents going around from coaching organizations. And that's okay. That's their thing. We all do things differently, but it excites me from the standpoint of where we're coming from because it's from a humanitarian space. It's real, it's serving people, and it's continuing to elevate our professionalism. And you know the great news for each and every one of you, it really, really works. 
what I want to close with are um, uh, words that matter. I shared with you, you know, um, if you study anything, I'm going to share some tools with you that I want you to use. Okay, I want to suggest you use. Um, and these are, as you've got some time and maybe things are slowing down, the one thing that I've studied over the years, the one thing that I invest in coaching on is copywriting. Why not? Because every choice you make is based on the words we hear, the words we read, everything is. If you get your message right, see, right now, you can really screw it up if your message is wrong, right? Really. So here's some of my old goodies, the Halbert copywriting method, part three, okay? Von Halbert. Uh, this is the Boron Letters by a legend, Gary Halbert. Okay, copywriting. And um, here's a really good one too, because it takes you back to emotional connection, but it's, it's you know, it's back to the basics. Fabled Service, uh, former VP, I think, with Nordstrom's, okay? And then um, another one, Ogilvy on advertising. It's copywriting, getting it right, okay? Your words are everything. And these will be universal across all platforms. When you write an email, when you write a subject line, when you post, do an Instagram post, when you do a Facebook post, everything. And copywriting is not just what we write, it's what we say. And so it's super, super critical. Uh, the legend here, Roy H. Williams, the wizard of ads. See, if you really want to thrive in our industry, actually what you need to do, and I'm a coach in our industry, you need to look outside the tools that are out there. It's a great big world out there. And finally, contagious. So those are some great tools for you to use. Um, here's the final piece that I want to share with you is this is, um, you know, in our industry, we've wanted to upgrade our software. I've upgraded my software. I've upgraded my software. You know, there's three softwares that I want to challenge you, um, to upgrade. Think about this. You can't reassure people if you're walking around in uncertainty and it's okay to have fear. I want you to acknowledge it. Don't resist it. It's okay for you to have uncertainty. Just acknowledge it, but you want to know what's most important is you give yourself the best shot. You know what I want you to work on in this time at whatever level that you're being restricted or, or businesses slowed down. I want you to upgrade three softwares and I want you to go to version 2.0 of your software of your mind. I want you to go to version 2.0 of software of your heart. And I want you to go to version 2.0 of software of your body. And that includes what you read. That includes what you read for your mind. It's nutrition, just like the food. I'm not saying, you know, go eat, uh, um, chicken breast and, and rice the rest of your life. I'm saying just do a little bit better, whatever is a little bit better for you. I'm saying that, you know what, not sit down and read for hours and hours and hours. I'm saying read just a little bit more than you have. Set yourself up to win, okay? And we look at your heart, you know, whether it's uh, your, your religion or, or, or meditation, whatever it may be that works for you, the thing that gives you peace in your heart. Because if you go out today and you're not taking care of those three, I'm going to tell you something. People are going to feel it and they need you. And you're a leader and you get the privilege. You get the privilege if you're a broker owner, manager, or team leader, you get the privilege of, of, of being supportive of people. Now, does that mean you can't go through those feelings? No, but you have a responsibility just like me to do that work so that you, when you start your day, you've given yourself the best chance to serve other people. Because if you don't do that, you can't take care of other people. Um, final thing that I want to share with you, I'm going to give you a homework assignment to do right now. You know, people have been a little bit sensitive right now. You need to go out and get your market statistics. And, and I'm just going to, you know, I don't know, um, you know, law of primacy and recency. And I, I hope that you remember me from this time um, in a good space um, and, and feel that I've contributed to you. Um, but, but I also want to, you to feel challenged by me. Um, right now, it, it, what I think is exciting for those of you that have not used video and not adopted it. Well, you know, you don't have much of a choice anymore, right? <laughs> so um, I'll just say that from a space of love. Um, and I know it's uncomfortable. You don't want to know what's really uncomfortable? What would be uncomfortable if this business that's changing passes me up? And, 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 you know, what I tell people is accountability is the highest form of love we can show a human being. And accountability is really the truth. And that's what I just really want to share with you. Okay. This is the time. This little magic thing um, right here is super, super critical. So number one, I'm going to give you the framework. You need to go out right now and see, here's the difference. Ready? So um, I was with a, uh, um, one of my teams I coach in, in, the, um, uh, in the Midwest. So the Midwest in December, you know what the weather is. And it was nine to five and they had about 70 agents there. And I got done at 5 p.m. We were talking about needing listings. And so, you know, how are we going to get more listings? Listing inventory is done. We talked about, and, and, and my client said, John, what did you do? You know what? I door knocked, cold called expired FISBOs. Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine? Um, 
And um, I said, well, that's what it's going to take. So it's 5 p.m. when we get done. Here's what I said at the end um, is that there's, there's two people that are going to leave here. Most of you are going to leave and say, that sounded, many of you will leave and say, that sounded great. I'll start doing that tomorrow. <laughs> Some will say, that's bananas and I'm never doing it. And there's going to be a few that are going to leave and they're going to take immediate action. And you know, on my way to the airport at 5 p.m. till 6 p.m. leaving, selfies started coming in from agents that were out door knocking because they were still a little bit light. And that's what I wanna share with you. What I wanna share with you is urgency. See, people that, that, that make it through this and the people that make it through this in, in, in flying colors and create an impact on the community and their lives, Okay, they have urgency. I'm not talking about panic. And if you don't leave here with urgency, if you don't take some immediate action, what I've shared with you, okay, you're going to put yourself in panic. And that's just with support. Here's the urgency. You need to do a market snapshot right now. And I'm going to give you what your open lines. Okay, that market snapshot is a video. And you know what? Guess what? It's okay. You know, if your hair doesn't look good, all that stuff, it doesn't matter. You know, um, my crappy video continues to outperform your absent video. I'll say it again, my crappy videos continue to outperform your absent video. You need to do a market snapshot. Is that insensitive? Well, I'm always looking at copywriting, okay? People want to know, right? So A, and the other thing too is the social media traffic right now is unbelievable, by the way. I know, shocking news, you knew that. Well, what are you doing to get the right message out there? People sure are concerned about, and like be the information portal on the SBA, be the information portal on, on SBA loans, on, on, on Freddie Mae, Fannie, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, et cetera, okay? But be the information portal, keep people up to date. So here's how you wanna open because you wanna be, uh, aware. So I'm going to take you through some skills. See, a lot of the training people get in video is wrong. And I'm going to help you. Number one, get rid of happy Saturday. Hi, it's John. Okay. Hey, Facebook. You've just lost people your first three seconds. I'm telling you, look at the news. You go to the news goes, um, 75 year old man scales the Eiffel Tower and tragic results of the car accident that took place over on the south side of town. Hey, it's John Cheplak with ABC News. You guys, they tried to hook you. So here's where you need to open up being compassionate. In the changing times we're traveling through together, one thing I'm constantly asked, can you tell me what's happening in the real estate market? In the changing times we're traveling through together, traveling through together, language matters. See, this is the difference makers in the elite versus people have to spend so much money and go wide. We go deep, we connect, okay? One thing I'm constantly asked, okay? What's happening in the real estate market? Hey, it's John Black with ABC Real Estate. Introduce. So hook, it's relevant. Introduce yourself. Number three, talk to them like a third grader. Tell them what you're going to cover. In this video, I'm going to share with you what's taking place in the current market over the last 30 days based on the circumstances that continue to surround us and evolve. And you're gonna tell them what's going on. I'm also going to share with you how we are accommodating the changing ways to market real estate for those that still have the need to buy or sell. So now I future paced them and now I'm giving you an opportunity. Typically I don't in my market snapshot, but right now I need to demonstrate how we're offering virtual tours, okay? How we're doing offers on Zoom, how inspectors are doing offers on Zoom, how an agent sold a home from start to finish through Boomtown, through Boomtown. Um, through bomb bomb okay those are the critical pieces so i'm going to educate them and then the last thing i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about how we're accommodating the changing times for those that are in need so that we are accommodating the safety and supporting and flattening the curve if you'd like further information on what's taking place in the marketplace or like to be kept up to date give me a call and it's appropriate and at the same time, you get to tell people what you're doing, okay? If you weave in there, interest rates are still good, da 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 da, killed it, killed it. I, I, I just know.
Okay, and I want to support you with that. So um, take these guiding principles. If you leave with anything from this, what I would share with you to really hold on to, make deposits in the business relationship equity account. All those call to actions that they've been telling you you need to do, the gurus did. <laughs> Wrong. Proven it year after year after year. Proven it with recruiting. We've proven it with buyers and sellers. See, you don't have to ask when you give so much value. When you make deep psychological and emotional bonds. When you educate and inform. See, what we do is we make such deep psychological and emotional bonds with people that they know what the next natural step is. It's to choose you. So um, go out there, take action, hold on to the principles. Nurture, meet people where they're at, enter the conversation going on in their head, have empathy, you'll become relatable, self-discovery, they'll choose. Appreciate y'all. Oh, I can't hear you. Maybe it's my sound, or is it your sound? Again, with the April Fools, and we appreciate you. Um, I Watching all the threads, people are just feeling like, outstanding stuff that you have provided. We had people from all over the world. Uh, I'll tell you about that uh, later. You all, I am so privileged, so lucky to call John Cheplak my personal coach. And now you get to see uh, a little bit of what I get to experience on a weekly basis, which is everything you just said is so John Cheplak. There is nothing that is market specific about what you just shared. Everything that you um, provide, everything that you embody and everything that, that is your human spirit that you share, it has nothing to do with market or economic conditions. It has worked for you for years. It's working for you, particularly in this type of situation, because other people weren't doing it and thinking that way. And it's going to work for you and those that follow you for years to come. A um, couple of things, if I were just to follow up, um, to highlight some of the things that I know are very strong Keplak belief systems that everybody should have written down. I hope that they wrote down was number one, focus is your superpower. With all the noise right now, focus is your superpower. Um, you, you went back through and, and reminded us that it is about making deposits in the emotional relationship equity account. So, and I love the visual that that gives me, it's just deposit, 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 deposit value as much as you can. Uh, substitute think with feel, because that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, we are in the human experience business, become obsessed with it. Um, I love that we are um, focused not on uh, you know, the obsession of being uh, the, the the person who brings reassurance in a time of uncertainty. That is our job. It's not to sell, it's to be, to tap into what we know. It's not about selling, it's not about objection handling, it's about being real life human beings, which is what we do the best. You don't need a script for that. Yes. Um, love that, God, I highlight that the most. Um, and that the highest form of personal persuasion is self-discovery. Don't tell them, just ask. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. All of these incredible Cheplak principles uh, that, that you have taken and, and, and embodied in me, and I think a, a lot of people that follow you. Um, I have to tell you, a lot of people not only really appreciating what you're, you're bringing to the table, but everybody wants a review of your books. Is that something you'd be willing to, to uh, share one more time and review? Sure. Contagious. Contagious. Okay. Jonah Berger. And these are ancient ones. I'm taking you guys, you know, the Remax has been such a great relationship. The, 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 the Wizard of Ads, Roy H. Williams, legend, the Wizard of Ads, um, Ogilvy. So these are, these are old OG uh, copywriting guys, o Ogilvy on advertising. This one here is more important because Nordstrom's done it. Nordstrom is in the experience. They're in the moment creation business. How is that different from us? It's exactly the same. This book, I read it back. See, what I do is, is, is I'll hear people say, I read this book. I'm going to read 50 books. I go, awesome. You got through a million books. What did you get out of it? Oh, what are you taking action on? Oh, you know, my rule is I keep going 1998. I got this. And it's still here because the principles are constant. Uh, the Boron Letters by Gary Halbert. Awesome stuff. More copywriting. And the Halbert Copywriting Method Part 3, Bond Halbert. I'm going to promise you, if you do video, you connect at deep emotional levels, and you get your message right, 
you're going to feel really good about yourself, first of all, and that's more important than selling anything. And when we feel really good about ourselves and what we're doing, um, we're a magnet. And it's easy. And I think, I think you have been the magnet today. I'm watching all of the, the chat uh, posts that so you're going to have to go back and take a look. Uh, another one of my favorite things, and this is where we'll end today, is take care of yourself first so then you can take care of others. So that is what we will part with is go, go out, take care of yourself. He's not telling you to go change your world, just improve on things that you're doing just a little bit, right? Just a little bit of an improvement. Focus on yourself that you can give the value to others. This will be posted on Remax University later today, as well as on YouTube. John Chublack, you're the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you.